First, I think it's an exciting time to be at EB. Uh, we have uh, unveiled a new strategic plan last year with new values and new mission. And uh, at the Loyola School, we are working a lot on these uh, values and missions. So as you see, all the, the values are here. Um, what we do is usually we take a value and we work on it during three or four months. So the first value that we have worked on is unity. Uh, we have done a lot uh, of uh, unity activities inside the classroom, in our SEL program, but also sometimes on the playground, so it's really uh, important for us. We just don't want to have all these values and uh, just on the wall, we want to live by our values. So we want to teach our value and we want really to implement them in our program. So this is, uh, this is great. And, we have endeavor and zeal, zeal for the excitement, the joy of learning. Uh, so this is uh, what happened a lot in our uh, lower school classes. We have uh, this year also um, unveiled a new math and science program that we call STEM program, where it's not STEAM yet, so it's science, technology, engineering, math. Usually there's an A for art. Uh, right now we are not uh, doing the art within this program, but we are planning to do it next year. So we are adding the art. Mainly we have a new uh, specialist, a science uh, specialist, so Isabel Leblanc, who has a PhD in biology. She teaches at UC Berkeley. And she does uh, classes from uh, first grade to fifth grade. So every week we have classes of science, of STEAM, of technology, so we are, she teaches also the robotics, so in first grade we already uh, implemented some coding and robotic class with some robots that we call Bebot, for example. And uh, we have also uh, embedded in this program our gardening program, so we will keep on going with the gardening program, but it's really linked to what they do with Isabel in the science class. So we try to make link in our curriculum, the garden, the technology, the science, and, and uh, so the, the art will, will come next year. So the robotic curriculum, last year when I came there was no robotic at all. So I implemented a new robotic curriculum from first grade to fifth grade. Um, this year, well last weekend, uh, our fifth grade team uh, arrived second place at a Lego League uh, challenge. So we had to build a robot and do all the, the missions. So. I uh, think our robotic curriculum is strong, um, we, have, uh, we have had a lot of success, we, our 4th and 5th grade, for example, code, they do some games on Scratch Junior, uh, we have different robots in uh, the different level, grade level, so in 1st grade we have the D-Bot, in 2nd grade we implement the Dash, it's a free will robot and it's really nice for the, for the, the students. And then we go on with uh, other, other robotic, and then uh, we, we code on the games, so it's really nice. We also uh, try to harmonize a lot the French and American curriculum. Um, so as you know, we are a French accredited uh, school by the French Ministry of Education, so we have to uh, do uh, the French program. So we have to implement most of the French uh, curriculum, the French program. But we have also uh, the American side, and we, are, we, we base our curriculum on the, the Common Core. And so sometimes we try to really harmonize them. For example, our math approach uh, is something that we have harmonized a lot. We have a balanced literacy program, so with readers and writers workshop, but we also harmonize. Uh, and we try, we try really to bridge uh, the two languages and to make links between the two languages. This is very important for us. When, you, when our students learn languages, we are not a language school. We still uh, focus on the concept, but we try to develop it and to implement it within two languages. So it is really important for us. And of course we have a dedicated, dynamic and very experienced team of teachers. Most of our teachers have been here for almost 15, 20, 10 to 15 years. Uh, we have a lot of training programs, training workshop. Uh, this year, for example, we focused on differentiation. So we send a lot of teachers uh, on, uh, on workshops out of the school, but also within the school. We have uh, speakers coming, we have activities, workshops, counselors. So it's, it's really important for us to be always on the move regarding our pedagogy and how we teach. 
So, uh, child development when he's six years old, uh, mainly when uh, yeah, there is, uh, so he enters uh, first grade. So usually they are growing, so they feel taller, they feel big kids, they are losing their baby teeth and their increased coordination, meaning that the fine growth, the fine motor skills are really there. They are really uh, kind of trying hard to with the writing, with the handwriting, but even with a different uh, different aspect of the, of the space. So it's it's really important because their physical uh, growth will impact also their social growth. Um, so the social emotional, they are starting to have their first friendship. They call their best friends. They are seeking attention and affection a lot, and uh, they want to understand uh, a lot their surrounding world. And uh, they are starting using some, some humor. Emotionally, uh, they are more resilient, but they, they have this competitive spirit that uh, start to, to rise. And they are really sensitive to criticism when, when there is something that's wrong or they, they sometimes can't, can't do. It's really uh, getting their emotion hard. So this is the, the kind of work that we do with our first grade when we have uh, a lot of activities where they struggle, where there is a challenge, we try to really support them in their emotional uh, aspect. For the cognitive uh, part, of course, we call it the age of reason because they, their understanding of the world uh, is really bigger. They, they see the bigger picture. They, they really capture uh, some details and they really make links between the things. So before that, it was kind of separated, and now they are making leak and they understand the cause and effect of, of things. And of course, they are still eager to learn, and they love learning facts. They love to, to learn a lot about uh, their, uh, their world and all, all that's uh, surrounding them. So, transition from K to uh, G1, grade one. So usually, oral language, they have a good understanding of classroom languages. Uh, the French Foundation uh, oral language uh, has been, uh, I think, a very good, very well taught in, in K. So they understand the, the instructions, they understand uh, all the, the classrooms, uh, uh, materials and, uh, and language. Their ability to describe objects and people um, is there. So they are really uh, at, the, um, at the level where they can go further in the details. You know, they, are, they can give more description, they can be more descriptive. They retell part of a story and then some of are on their way to master, so mastering the narrative language in French or in English. Of course it's in French because they have 80% in French in K and they will still have 80% in grade 1. Uh, reading. The K teacher has developed literacy skills, in particular phonemic awareness. Phonemic awareness with, uh, so in English and in French. And this is also a huge work that we do. And Maggie, that I did not introduce, but maybe most of you know her, she's the instructional coach and coordinator also of the English curriculum. We worked a lot with uh, Camille True, our speech ther therapist, to link all the sounds, all the phonemes, to get the phonemic awareness easier for our kids. So if we have the same sound and we have in English and in French, we try to blend them and to use the same word, for example, and to make them aware that we have the uh, same sounds. So it, it's easier for them. So that's the work that we do uh, in K and in grade one. Uh, in math, we have uh, all the, the basic concepts and vocabulary required to learn operations, solve simple problems. Uh, they have done some measurements and they understand the basic geometry, so meaning the space, you know, the shapes, and, uh, and these, uh, these different things. Um, I know that when you, when you have uh, the binders coming back from home uh, when you are in K, sometimes you can feel that, oh, uh, there's not a lot of math activities, there's a lot of reading, writing, but I don't see a lot of math. Math is not something in K that we do on paper. They will have um, a long way before ever we will work on papers. It's really activities on a daily basis, so sometimes it's just it can be, can be moving around and uh, using some numbers. It can be also math games. We have a lot of math games uh, in the K classes. So it's not formal, it's more informal way, but anyway, it's also a way to learn the numbers and all the, all the, the, the basic mathematics concepts. Uh, so in grade one, the, the curriculum highlights. So they will have, of course, French and English language uh, 
arts. Uh, we have a bilingual balanced literacy approach in French and English, and I will uh, let Maggie talk about that just uh, at the end of this. Uh, we have math, we have an harmonized also um, program, curriculum, which we call Math Corner, Number Corner. So it's taught in French and in English. So we basically we have uh, um, the same material, and either the French teacher or the English teacher use this material. And so they, they try to really harmonize during the week and over the, the different months all the, the concepts. <laughs> They will uh, do uh, some physical education, but it will be uh, more towards cooperation and uh, you know working together. Social studies, they will start uh, studying the um, kind of a timeline, the past, the parents, the grandparents, uh, and the, their space also, how, how, uh, how all this time works. Um, social emotional learning, this is what also will change uh, a little bit from, from the K classes. We have Christopher, Christopher Colbom, who is uh, the supervisor in the, in the yard, is also the SEL coach. And so he teaches 30 minutes of SEL every week from grade 1 to grade 5. So it, it's really important because we deliver a curriculum. It's still there Le Pacifique, Madame Le Pacifique, but we go further. We have we have also uh, conflict resolution, we have empathy, uh, we have all, we address a lot of challenge that they face even in, in grade one, and is really the link between, between the classes and what he teaches every, every week and what happens in, in, in the real world, <laughs> in, in the yard. And so as I told you, the, the STEM, uh, the introduction to the scientific method, um, Isabel is, is really uh, teaching how when you have an issue, how when you have a, a problem, you can solve it using a very precise step-by-step uh, -step, uh, scientific method. So we want to teach them that uh, any kind of uh, problem can be solved using uh, a very uh, detailed uh, step and process. And they will still go to the garden and it will be linked, as I told you, uh, by the, the science program. And of course, uh, we, we are uh, still in 80% of French, so French will be taught, so math, science, art, music, civics, SEL, and P will be in French, and 20% of English language arts and some math, uh, as I told you. And they have also a co-teaching time per week, so they usually teach us French teacher and English teacher have a co-teaching time embedded in their schedule. So they usually work um, on the different aspect of the literacy, or it can be a math, or it can be a field trip, for example, the, the grade one, first graders have gone to uh, the fire station, and so they, 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 cry, they try to describe and, and write a story, and see, they, they saw all the words uh, related to the fire station in French and in English. So it was uh, done uh, bilingual. And of course, uh, you, you know that uh, being bilingual or even plurilingual, trilingual is, uh, has great benefits for, uh, for our children. Usually we call it superpower. Uh, you, are able to, you are more able to multitask. Uh, you have more opportunities because you see the world very differently. And what we do is that uh, in first grade and second grade, we'll still focus really on the French language and we harmonize it with the English language. So we try to make links. Uh, from third grade, so third, fourth and fifth, we really want to uh, learn the concept and then uh, explore it bilingually in two different languages. So we, in, in, in third and fourth and fifth, it's really um, the, the bilingualism that is uh, the, the big aspect uh, of our program. In first and second, we still have a focus on French, but still we, uh, we try to harmonize uh, all this. So, what will be different next year? So next year, they will have uh, their own desk and supplies. So that's going to be the first time they will have to deal with their material, uh, with a table, with some papers, binders, notebooks, and it can be a challenge. So organization skills will rise, it will, uh, it will ramp up, but uh, the first month of the first grade uh, is chaotic. It's really uh, the backpack, they have uh, the drawings, they don't know what to take, sometimes they go home, they don't have what they, they, they need, uh, it, it's crazy. But usually we, we, we try to, uh, I think after one month, 
it can, it can be resolved uh, easily. We have so one French teacher and one English teacher, but no more assistant. So they will be only with one teacher in a classroom, except when there is the co-teaching time when there are two teachers. Um, on this, we have also a student support team. Uh, so we have Camille True, who is the coordinator, she's a speech therapist. But we have also uh, Annale, who is uh, the third grade teacher, who is also the support for cycle two. We have Heather McQueenay, an English teacher, who has also 25% of support. So usually they go into the classroom when there is, for example, English time, especially in first and second grade. And they support all the, the, the students that could struggle in their reading skills or in their writing skills. So usually when there is English time, there is uh, more than one teacher per class because we, we really use uh, the student team as a, as a support for all the students. They will start doing homework. I will come back to, to this one. They will bring, uh, bring a snack from home. They will have lunch in the NPR right here. And this is very different also. The first month in the NPR, it's, it's crazy. Uh, they, they don't know when they arrive, they don't know how, where to sit because we have all the tables they can, so they can eat with uh, uh, other friends in other, in other classes. So the first graders eat alone, but the free classes. So usually it's, um, it's a time also uh, in, uh, during the lunch that we have uh, two adults for free classes, so it's, it's a huge difference for, for them. So we, we try uh, during the first month to give them a sense of, uh, you know, because they, they want to talk, they talk a lot and sometimes they forget to eat. <laughs> or uh, they, they, they start to also uh, be on their autonomy, so sometimes they, they, they feel that uh, since, they are not, uh, since they are less supervisors, they can, you know, just, oh no, I don't want to eat that. But we are really emphasizing with them the fact that they need to sit they need to eat, and that um, so we, we, we want to send home the entire lunchbox. So we don't allow them to throw their, their, their lunch if they don't eat, so that you have a sense of uh, if, they, they eat, if they eat or not. Uh, they have one recess in the morning, one after lunch, so basically they have 20 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes after lunch. And uh, once a week they will be able to check out some uh, books at the library. Um, I forgot to give uh, Maggie uh, uh, time for the balanced literacy approach. Do you want to talk? Yeah, yeah. It was in the curriculum and uh, I went too fast. Um, so at EB, um, we use a balanced literacy approach. A balanced literacy just means that there is a balance between um, looking at phonics and sounds and word parts and also looking at applying those to authentic level text. So students get evaluated um, at the beginning of the first grade on their early literacy skills, so what they know about sounds and letters and phonetic awareness. And then over the course of first grade, they'll build reading skills in French and in English. And then at the end of the year, they'll be assessed to see what level they are. And then going forward, at the beginning and end of each year, they're assessed in French and English on their individual reading levels. So there might be a book that the teacher works on with the whole class, but then students will also be reading books in small groups or independently that are at their level. So some of them might be above grade level in one language or at grade level in another. No matter where they're at, they'll get that differentiation that we know is really important. Because even in monolingual schools, even with the exact same instruction, you'll see a lot of fluctuation in the actual ability of students and what their reading level is. Some of them can read things that are much more difficult, some of them might need more support. And especially in a bilingual school, we feel that differentiation um, is important. And the other balance in balanced literacy is a balance between whole group instruction, small group instruction, and individual instruction. So many years ago, in a more traditional setting, everything was kind of done whole group, and the teacher's at the front, and we're all reading this page. Um, we, we don't have that in balanced literacy. There are times when the teacher will read aloud a story or look at a book together as a class so they can have that community experience and talk about strategies and, and learn tools, but then they'll also be able to apply those strategies and tools to um, different books that they read in small groups and individually. 
um, so they can like, progress um, at their own rate and we're not holding anyone back and, and supporting anyone that needs support, um, especially with you know um, learning to read in both French and English. We have a simultaneous biliteracy program here, so they're learning to read um, at, 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 at this, in the same moments, you know, over the course of kindergarten is preparing them with the tools and foundations to read, and then um, over the course of first and second grade and third grade, they're going to become fluent readers in both languages. Do you want me to say anything about the math or no? Yeah. Oh, sure. Any questions about literacy or yeah. reading, writing? No, great. Um, just a word about the math. Um, so we've worked in the last three years to um, really make sure that our math program is harmonized and bilingual. Um, so the French um, national standards and the American standards for math are slightly different. Um, and so we wanted to be able to, um, to, to link those things together and make sure that when teachers were um, teaching one concept that the other teacher was then applying that concept to the other language and not just reteaching it. Um, so we have a, what we call a Singapore inspired approach. So we use a lot of the um, methodology or how to teach math from Singapore. We use their problem solving methods and their bar models for visualizing um, and um, and also teaching units to mastery. Um, we really um, like those elements of the approach and like heavy conceptual um, base. So not just memorizing algorithms or you do it this way because this is the rule. We really um, focus on teaching them the concepts behind the math and that helps them in the long run. Um, but we do use the standards of the French and the American program. So um, in terms of the standards, I mean more not how we teach math, but what we teach, when we teach certain skills over, over grades. Um, and we've harmonized the two programs so that we can capitalize on the unique and strong aspects of, of, of both approaches. Thank you. Uh, so here we are. Um, this is a taste of, uh, so, uh, first grade. So, this is, for example, uh, what they had for um, um, this, this week. It was, um, so basically, there's the, the day of the week, uh, so they, they, have, they have to write, they have to read, they have to write something. Here, they have to, uh, you know, kind of link uh, the number to their uh, written form. And here it's uh, also uh, on the sound, so it was uh, on the on the sound O, and so the different uh, writing uh, of the, the the O sound. This is um, something that sometimes they can do also uh, as a homework. So let me go back a little bit for the homework because usually homework is the first. It's kind of stressful. It's the first, uh, you know, your point of entry at the lower school is always homework. Okay, so how long? What are they going to do? So we have a philosophy and the, the, and the policy also. Uh, usually a first grader uh, should not uh, work more than 15 minutes every evening on his homework, in his or own work. So they will have some reading. Of course, I think reading is kind of, uh, you know, when you, when you ride a bicycle, you learn to ride, how to ride. It's really something that you have to, uh, to repeat a lot. So there's reading. There will be short exercise of uh, math sometimes and uh, short writing because handwriting is also important. But it won't exceed uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Usually, this policy, we add 10 minutes per grade every year. So in grade two, they will have between 20 and 25. In grade three, between 30 and 35, etc., etc. Uh, our policy is that uh, at the lower school, uh, students should not exceed 50 minutes every evening. Uh, and in in this 50 minutes, for example, in G4 and G5, in grade four and five, uh, there's the reading time. Usually, they have uh, some reading time. And what we, what we suggest is that if um, really a student struggles with uh, his own work, uh, we have the etude every evening. So every evening at the law school, we have etude. So French teachers usually 
uh, do etude. It's at the, the same rate for you, it's the same cost as aftercare. So either they stay on the ground or they go to etude. And then they can work and they can practice their reading. If you are not a French speaker, they can practice their, their reading skills with a French uh, teacher, So which, which I would recommend. Yes? Um, for first graders, the etude is one hour, right? The etude is one hour on the paper, but usually at 4.30, so 30 minutes after, everybody's out. Okay. This is our policy. So okay. first graders won't stay, we won't keep them for one hour in the classroom. No, no, you have to stay, no. Uh, if they do their homework, usually they read to the teacher, and they, they do their writings, so it will take 10 to 15 minutes. Then they have five to 10 minutes where they have independent reading, and then they are released into the, the yard. And I wanted to show you uh, this little euh, Les enfants, donc, je les ai organisés par groupe de niveau. On a fait une petite évaluation là depuis le début d'année. On, on connaît un petit peu le niveau des enfants. Et on a des livres qui sont nivelés aussi. Et euh, à chaque groupe correspond à un niveau. On découvre le livre ensemble, on s'appuie beaucoup sur les illustrations, il y a un travail de langage fait à partir des illustrations, et après ce travail de langage, on amène les enfants à lire le livre, à utiliser leurs différentes stratégies pour découvrir le texte. Ça, Balanced literacy is an approach to teaching children to read and write that encompasses a lot of different kinds of instructional activities. The balance in balanced literacy refers to a balance between whole group instruction, small group instruction, and individual one-on-one -on -one instruction. Balanced literacy is a wonderful approach for a bilingual school environment because there's a big focus on differentiation. Some students may be stronger reading in French than English, so this approach allows them to get the kind of instructional strategies that they need at their level. Also because there's a variety of instructional activities, it really boosts vocabulary development, which is very important at our bilingual school. Très souvent, les enfants prennent un livre et euh, ben voilà, ils regardent les images et ils n'ont pas forcément euh, lu parce que le texte est trop difficile. Et là, le texte est vraiment adapté à leur niveau. Si on a bien travaillé le vocabulaire qui, est, euh, qui va avec l'histoire, les enfants seront capables de lire. Ils ont confiance en eux et ça va les pousser à prendre d'autres livres. Donc euh, c'est ça quoi, le plaisir et le succès d'avoir euh, lu un livre tout seul, c'est énorme. <rire>